Hi guys, it's ASBYT and welcome back to a brand new video. Now today we have a budget laptop that I think potentially could be absolutely perfect for students that might be possibly studying come September time, but also many other people as well. So I thought I would bring it to you. I will do a quick unboxing for you, talk you through some of the specs, etc., and give you my overall sort of first impressions of this individual device. The link for the product will be in the video description below if you are interested in going through and getting it after seeing this video. So let's get straight to it. Right, so first of all, I feel I might have to point this out my voice sounds pretty horrific right now. I mean, I know it normally does, but it, it sounds even worse. I'm a bit under the weather, so I sound a little bit husky. So it's true, your hair committed blue aside. <laughs> the sort of voice that sh maybe should have a late night love podcast. No? Okay, now we've got that out of the way, let's get straight on with the unboxing. So we have here the Jumper X4 Notebook Jumper. It's an interesting name for a laptop. Certainly not a deal breaker, but interesting. We're gonna take this piece off here. Probably the worst start to unboxing video ever. Not sure what this is. Maybe the power brick. Yep, so we have our power brick there. And next out, there you have it. Anything else in the box? No, we do have our little manual here, user manual, which does have English instructions. I thought I was gonna say it's all in Chinese for a second, but as you can see, we have a little bit of text in English saying, so dear Jumper customers, first we must show our great thanks for your trust to finally choose our product. It is a great honor that you present ultra trust to us from massive suppliers, and we will sincerely cherish and thank for this again. Not having a go. Certainly better than my Chinese. Enough of that lingo. Let's get straight to the rest of the unboxing. So a few more bits to take off. That is so satisfying. <laughs> and then finally, if we open it up, we have this little section here to protect the screen. We have another little sticker here to let you know there is a headphone jack. So while we're doing that, we may as well get onto uh, what sort of ports come with it. So on here we have on one side a micro HDMI and a USB 3.0 port. We also on the other side have the DC power port, the headphone jack, another USB 3.0 and a TF card slot as well for expandable storage. So all in all, although there's not multiple ports, there's probably enough for the core things you might wanna do with it. So first thing in terms of build quality, it is a full aluminum shell. So it does have an aluminum unibody. It feels fairly premium, quite weighty in the hand, not too heavy, so it is still portable, but it's not the lightest. You've got the logo jumper on the front here and on the back you have uh, your rubber feet here to stop it sliding around. And it does on the whole look and feel pretty premium. Now we jump onto one of the negatives that I've got and that is of course the one hand open, which of course like my MacBook does for example, you can actually open it with one hand and there are many laptops that you can, some of them you can't. This is one, so as you can see you open it and it, it just lifts the whole thing. So you will have to actually use two hands to open up the screen. Not a deal breaker for some, but it might be for others. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna power it on. And while we're powering it on, I will talk a little bit about the specs. So the CPU is an Intel Gemini Lake 1920 by 1080p screen. So it is a full HD display. Four gigabytes of DDR4L RAM. It's rocking an 128 SSD. It's got ninth generation HD graphics. So UHD graphics 600, which frequency is up to 700 MHZ. Backlit keyboard. It does come with Windows 10 Home straight from the box. It's got a two megapixel camera on the front here. In terms of the hinge, it's pretty secure. It feels quite nice and stiff without being too over the top. So it, you know, you can push it right back and it doesn't flop, for example, it will stay pretty much where you put it. It does wobble a little bit, as you can see here, as I'm doing that until it actually then stops and stays in place. Obviously without testing over time, I can't share with you the longevity of that hinge, but at this moment in time, it feels fairly secure. Now we're going to jump onto the trackpad. Now it is fairly smooth, it's quite responsive. I have noticed that the two finger gesture to sort of scroll isn't quite as good as perhaps the techless laptop that I've got here, which is another similar one. I did do a review on that already, which I will leave linked here so you can go through and check that out if you want. It's certainly not a bad trackpad, but again, 
again, there are better ones on the market. Obviously, you will be able to change the responsiveness and the speed of the actual mouse cursor in your settings with the trackpad. So that may alter your experience as well. And also in terms of the clickiness of that trackpad, it's quite a loud click. So that's, again, that's not a deal breaker, but if you can listen, you, you're certainly not going to be doing any spy work with this bad boy, all right? So if you're in the back of a van spying on, you know, if you're part of the MI5 or whatever, you're not going to want this because they will find you. I do question where I go with some of these reviews sometimes. So it's a loud click. It's a responsive click. It does work every single time. Same with the right click. Now the whole of the trackpad doesn't work like it does on my MacBook, for example. Like if you're pressing at the top, nothing happens. It is down the bottom that has that functionality. In terms of the display, there's like a matte finish on it. So in terms of like being outside and stuff, it's not gonna be quite as reflective as a glossy screen. So some people might prefer that. It's not the brightest screen. Again, it's similar to the Tecla screen. So the clarity is pretty good. The actual colors are a little bit washed out, but not too bad. One thing I'm not a massive fan of is the actual size of the bezels. For example, they are slightly larger than I would prefer but that's just because we're in 2018 and everyone loves to drop a bezel. Many people won't find that a problem on a laptop. But again, one thing that I find strange about the design of this is the fact that we've got a full aluminium shell, like I've mentioned, it's all in silver. We've got silver keys, silver trackpad, silver bezels, black camera. I feel possibly they may have been able to have disguised that a bit better. It does sort of jump out at you like a big sort of spot. I actually like it personally when the keys are a different color to the actual laptop. I think it helps them stand out more. In terms of those keys, that there's quite a nice traction on it. They're quite soft to actually type on. Like again, to use the MacBook as an example, the new butterfly keys that they have inputted over the last sort of two years have made them very hard to actually type on. Whereas these are quite soft to actually type on. So if you're typing for quite a long time, again, we're talking students, for example, then it's not gonna become sort of a pain on your hands. The build quality of the keys, again, are pretty good on first inspection. Now this actually retails at 14, 279 US dollars, which we convert that to a few different currencies, just over 210 UK pounds, 240 euros, 19,165 Indian rupees, and in Australian dollars, it's around 380. So that gives you a rough idea of price. And as you can see, if you're on a limited budget, then this is going to be great for you potentially. I think what you're getting for the price is pretty decent. So I think that for students and for people who just want sort of a laptop to do the core necessities of life, Sounds like a Jungle Book song. The bare necessities of life. No. Even the laptop said no. So all in all, is this the perfect laptop? No. Is it a great budget laptop for people who want a laptop for the core features of Microsoft Word, browsing the internet, doing bits of work, little gaming, stuff like that, then absolutely, you're not gonna go wrong. The trackpad could be better. Uh, the keys are pretty responsive and quite soft to type on, etc. and the build quality is pretty good. The screen, again, could be brighter, and the resolution is fairly standard for this sort of price range at 1080p. All in all, if you're on a limited budget and you want a new notebook, then this might just be the one for you. As always, like I said, I will leave the product link in the video description below, so if you are not sure and want more information, all the information is there, so you can go through and check it out. This is where you guys come in let me know what you think of this notebook below. Do you think it's good value for the money? Do you think there are other products out there of a similar price that are better? Again, I'd love to hear your thoughts as always, and I will be sifting through, trying to answer as many comments and questions as I can. I love you and leave you. I'll see you in the next one. Say SBOT, peace out.